All right, let's talk about the associative property of addition. The associative property of the of addition is a little bit like Robin is uh, to Batman, uh, where the commutative property is Batman and associative property is Robin. Anyways, we need both of these crime fighters if we want to successfully solve problems in this town. Let's take a look at the associative property. It usually, the book usually shows us something that looks like this. Um, a plus B plus C, where the B and the C are in parentheses, and then they say, in the, with the associative property, you can move the parentheses. They say, hey, you can write it like this, A plus B um, plus C. Now, the thing that they never tell you in the book is that uh, the associative property is really focused more on grouping and less on parentheses. So uh, one little neat little trick you can do with the associative property is you can just throw away the parentheses altogether. So it turns out with the associative property, um, if I have something like this and I feel like I don't need those parentheses, like they're just getting in the way, I just throw them away. That is the associative property. In other words, all I'm doing is changing the way things are grouped. So here's a few, here's a couple of things that uh, I'd like you to write down in your notes is that the associative property allows you to change the grouping of terms and that terms are things that are added together. So I'm going to use this this word term as sort of a shorthand notation um, whenever I want to say things that are added together. So uh, uh, let's take a moment, let's pause the video and write down the associative property allows you to change the grouping of terms and terms are things that are added. Now let's take a look at a couple of practical applications of the associative property of addition. Uh, for one thing, uh, we could use uh, associative property. Let's call this example one. We could use associative property for a situation like this. I've got 53 plus 27 plus 49. But unfortunately, the way the problem is being handed to me, um, 27 and 49 are grouped together. And quite frankly, I have no idea how to add 27 and 49, not in my head. But I, I could add 53 and 27 together. So it'd be really nice if I could just throw away those parentheses, or better yet, regroup, um, and add the 53 and the 27 first and then the 49 later. Ooh, that would make things much better. And if I had to do that, then of course this would be, uh, what's that, 70 plus 10 is 80. And then the adding the 80 plus 49 is going to be a lot easier. So that gets me 129. And again, please make sure that all your answers are boxed, um, whether they're in your notes or they're on a test. So anyways, that's one quick practical application of the associative property, but it's not really that sophisticated. Let's look at something a little more interesting. A more common application of the associative property is something like this, um, where we have uh, terms that involve variables and numbers, and we have to combine them together but there are parentheses that are separating them. And we actually call this groups. Um, here's, here's a group of things that's being separated from this other group of things by the sets of parentheses. Now, uh, what we'd like to do is see this 5x and the 3x. Well, the, 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 the 3x and the 5x are both, they're known as like terms. Um, they are terms that have the same variable and the variable is raised to the same power. So we'd like to combine the 5x and the 3x together. We'd also like to combine the, the negative 7 and the negative 8 together. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to get rid of the, um, the parentheses. We're going to use the associative property. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and say uh, this will be just 5x minus 7 plus 3x minus 8, and, and that's the associative property. And let's, let's start a good habit, and let's make a note of what we just did uh, so that we understand uh, what, this, what happened between this step and this step. 
Now that we've, uh, and go ahead and take a moment and write down the associative property. If you want, you can abbreviate. Um, uh, but uh, uh, anyways, the, the, now we've got to do some more stuff to finish the simplification of this expression. And the way we'll finish the simplification is we'll combine 5x plus 3x. Um, I'll take advantage of the commutative property, which allows me to move the 5x and the 3x together. And you might recall um, that uh, if if I want to move the negative 7 and the negative 8, um, there is no commutative property for uh, subtraction. So I really should change those guys into um, uh, the adding the opposite. So this will really be plus a negative 7 and plus a negative 8 and that allows me to move them all around anywhere I want. So now I can go ahead and say plus negative 7 plus negative 8 and for those of you guys that are more sophisticated you can then easily convert those back to minus 7 and minus 8 and that's fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and write down what we just did. Um, essentially we just use the commutative property and I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate that so that we can get that done nice and quick. And let's go ahead and uh, let's now do the next thing, which is add the 5x and the 3x. That gets us 8x. Um, and then add the negative 7 and the negative 8. That will get us uh, actually minus 15 or plus a negative 15. And then I can go ahead and box that answer. And I will do that. And here's the answer boxed. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and make a note of what we did to get to that step. Um, we the, the thing that we did here when we combined together the, the 5x and the 3x, um, that's known as combine like terms. And you should add that to your notes. Combine like terms. There we go. So now we have a very well documented process for using the associative property and the commutative property and combining like terms. And notice that this is this is a, a pretty good uh, application of algebra. In other words, we'll be using this later, and so we should know that it's the associative property that allows us to do um, at least this very very first step. Let's take a look at a slightly more interesting example. In this example, we'll do something similar to what we just did, except we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to involve uh, a variable with a power of 2. So it'll be 3x squared minus 7x, and we will take that whole thing and we will subtract uh, 2x squared minus 5. So there's a couple of new things going on here. Uh, one new thing is, is that we're subtracting instead of adding the two groups. The other new thing is that we have an x squared and an x and a number. So we'll take a look at all of that in just a second here. Um, let's see here. Oh, I want to introduce a new concept to you before we go much further. Um, actually, I, I think I talked about it with the commutative property, but let me remind you. Uh, I just wanted to remind you about when we do subtraction, there's this thing called the subtraction rule. And the way to say it in English is that subtracting is like adding the opposite. And we're going to use the subtraction rule in order to make more sense of what we're about to do over here. So, if subtracting, the first thing I'm going to do, well, I'll leave this guy alone just for a second. 3x squared minus 7x, leave that in that group. But I'm going to change this from subtraction to addition. And now I'm going to take advantage of the subtraction rule where subtracting is like adding the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every term that's inside of these uh, uh, parentheses and I'm going to change the sign. Now remember terms are things that are added together. So this first term is 2x squared and we will change that to a negative 2x squared. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm changing from subtracting to adding. Adding a negative 2x squared is the same as subtracting a positive 2x squared. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this minus 5 into a plus 5. Remember, this really was a plus a negative 5, so I'm just changing it into plus a positive 5. And again, I can do that because plus a positive 5 is the same thing as minus a negative 5. 
So I'm not I'm not making anything up. I'm not really changing any values. Um, when I change this minus to plus, I have to change the signs of all the terms inside the parentheses. That's because subtracting is like adding the opposite. This is the opposite of this. Negative 2x squared is the opposite of 2x squared, and 5 is the opposite of negative 5. So um, that step, I would say, is we'll just call that the subtraction rule. So that's what we'll use when we're making note of what we just did. That's called the subtraction rule. Again, I just want you to understand why we're doing each thing that we're doing. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is throw away the parentheses. So we'll have 3x squared minus 7x. And by the way, <clears throat> I had to change this to an addition in order to throw away the parentheses because the associative property really only works for addition, just like the commutative property. So I'm throwing away the, uh, so because I changed to addition, I can now throw away the parentheses and get plus negative 2x squared and plus 5. So again, I'll make note of what I just did. And in this case, the, the justification for doing that step is the associative property. And I'll abbreviate to save some time. So the next thing is, uh, now I'll go ahead and rearrange things using the commutative property. So 3x squared minus 2x squared. And again, I could have written that as plus a negative 2x squared. But I want you to um, see that, that um, we can convert back and forth in our heads between plus a negative and minus. Um, then uh, the minus 7x, I'm just going to kind of put over here. Again, I could have written plus negative 7x and then moved it over. That would make it technically better with the commutative property. And then the plus 5, I will leave right there. Now, you'll notice that the 7x has no x term to combine with, but the negative 2x squared and the 3x squared, they can be combined together. Um, anyways, let's make note of what we just did. Um, what we just did is we used the commutative property to move everything around. <clears throat> and again, I'll abbreviate in order to uh, speed things up. And let's go ahead and um, let's now combine together like terms. 3x squared minus 2x squared, that gets us x squared minus 7x plus 5. And voila, what, what, what I've done is I have simplified the initial expression to a, as simple a state as it can possibly be. And again, we'll make note of what was, that, what was the thing that allowed us to do that last step. That was combine like terms. And I would love it if you got in a habit of being able to write down why you're doing the steps you're doing. Um, so many people come to me after a test or, or even after the final exam and they say to me, um, why is it that I got the grade that I got? I studied, I did every problem, I, fe I felt like I understood everything. But the problem is, is so many people really just don't get the basics. Um, you can do the problems, but if you don't get the basics, that doesn't mean that you'll be able to do a different problem that you encounter that's similar to the other problems. But understanding why we're allowed to do each step that we're allowed to do, that's the sort of thing that gives you higher test scores and better understanding of the material.